the fuck did I get back here? It seems like I have to review the Penumbra series. You know, it's funny that I have to review this particular game series, seeing as how I reviewed Amnesia the Dark Descent in this exact same spot a couple of years ago. Amnesia, of course, being the spiritual successor of the Penumbra series. Penumbra Overture was Frictional Games' first game from back when they were just a small indie company. The plan was set to make a three-part episodic game series out of the story, but because of budgetary issues they wrapped the story up in the game's sequel, The Black Plague. Let's just take it really fucking easy. No. <gasps> As you guys might remember, PewDiePie shares a funny relationship with both the Amnesia and the Penumbra series. They were the games that helped him revolutionize the Let's Play genre, causing the entire gaming landscape on YouTube to change from the traditional gaming channels like the AVGN for example, to some sort of reaction or overreaction channels if you will. Since then it has never been easier to flood the internet with low effort content. Now as today's king of YouTube was rapidly making a name for himself, he also helped making frictional games a household name. I mean, Everybody and their grandmother wanted to copy his success formula by turning on their webcams while playing frictional games so they can scream like little girls. Me on the other hand, I do not scream like a little girl. I'm a grown ass man with big, big muscles who just happens to film his game reviews somewhere in the mountains in a tower, deep, deep in the woods, at night, far, far away from civilization. A very manly thing to do, yes, yes. Anyway, spoiler warning, um, I am gonna be ruining some of the plot for you, but I'm not gonna ruin the entire game for you so you can still play it for yourself and enjoy it. Our story begins with our main protagonist, a 30 years old physicist named Philip Buchanan, receiving a letter from his father at his mother's funeral. <laughs> Talk about being a little over dramatic over here, might as well add that he cannot pay his mortgage and that he has cancer in his ass. His father was presumed dead 30 years ago as he seemed to have vanished from the surface of the planet. He points his son to his belongings and orders him to destroy his entire research. Philip decided instead to disobey his father and found out that he was working in a lab in Greenland. So he decided to go and visit his merry old man. By the way, something about Philip's voice annoys the fuck out of me. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing which he inexplicably expected to come any day. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away from a chartered boat, beginning the 12 hour journey that would lead me into my past. He has a quiet voice, a heavy accent, and when he speaks it seems like he swallows entire words. This guy's supposed to be a professor at a university near Mayfair. How the fuck is he giving lectures over there? Well, we're in a boat right now that is currently docked to a port in Greenland. And would you look at this, old Jackie Daniels. Always my faithful companion. This cabin right here serves as some sort of tutorial level I guess. So we learn how to pick up the items we need and we're off to our little journey into the cold weather of the North Pole. Having found the coordinates of his father's whereabouts, Philip finds a bunker that he's trying to access. Problem is, it's frozen shut. A fine little detail that they added over here. Whenever you click on the right mouse button on any object in the game, you're gonna get some information or Philip might just crack some jokes about that certain object that you see in front of you. But most importantly, he's gonna maybe find some hints that will help him progress the game a little further. This game isn't really a shoot em up type of game. It's more like a stealth game in which you have to do a succession of puzzles until you reach the end of the game. So any information you get is gonna be useful. The only objects I see around me are these three stones over here. Now frictional games usually has this grabbing mechanic that you can do. You just left click to hold the object you want and you imitate the motion of the movement you wanna achieve with your mouse. There we go, just gotta open up the hatch. Just gotta do a pulling motion and uh, which direction do I have to pull this? For fuck's sake the hinges are right there! Come on, come on, come on! Come on, come on, come on! This is making me mad! Ah! Yeah! 
So in order to open the hatch, you kind of have to move the mouse diagonally, which is not the way you're supposed to open a hatch, I guess. <laughs> Can't really fault the developers. They didn't perfect everything with the grabbing mechanic, but it got better in the other games that followed this one. And in we go. And it's dark. Well, nothing we cannot fix. I mean, I can choose between the flashlight that illuminates a conical area in front of me, a flare that I can throw away to illuminate a distant area, or a glow stick that illuminates a small range radius around me evenly. A stick, by the way, that for some reason never runs out of juice. It's nice having a lot of lighting options, but what the developers royally fucked up is you're supposed to fear the dark because the monsters are there and you have limited light sources. What you feel instead is you have unlimited light sources because you never run out of batteries, you never run out of flares, and you will always have the glowing stick with you. So this door over here is currently locked, and if I understand it correctly, I have to find a way around it. Ah, a hammer. This is gonna be useful. Remember kids, when you have a problem in life, always smash it with a hammer, because violence is always a possible solution for any problem. By the way, moving the hammer in the game is kinda awkward because you have to imitate the motion with your mouse and it is not as easy as it looks. Anyway, we made it behind the door. Well, fuck. This is getting interesting. I seem to notice that the game gives me a lot of instructions and there are maps everywhere with a marking telling me exactly where I am. So I never really get lost here. My first goal is to find out what happened here and to find a way to move deeper into what appears to be a mining shaft, I guess. As with the Amnesia series, you're gathering clues from written documents and you gather items that you need to remove obstacles. I must say, wandering around there really gives me a foreboding feeling. The fuck is that? Is that some sort of dog? This creepy ass flea bag makes me quite uncomfortable. According to the hints, I should just dodge and this glorified roadkill will have difficulty seeing me despite directly looking at me. Not only that, I can also see much better in the dark when I'm crouching. To me it seems like Philip has superpowers. You better not fuck with these dogs, because for the most part you cannot kill them as they're undead and they will just pop right back up. You can distract them with some beef jerky, but other than that just avoid them. If they spot you, you have to run and trigger another area of the game before they catch you. To me personally it feels like fictional games didn't really have good humanoid models to use in the game. Which is okay, but the creatures that they did use come across more like a nuisance than anything else. The strongest feeling that you feel in this game is isolation. You're somewhere in what appears to be a mining shaft, somewhere in Greenland. You feel absolutely lost. You have no idea where you are and what is in front of you. And most importantly, you do not have any kind soul that you can talk to. You read horrible stories on the documents you gather along the way. Like that of our dear friend Dr. Roberts. The man bunkered himself inside the mining shafts and he was not able to leave. He had limited rations and he started to succumb to the lack of food and started eating spiders. Initially, he saw that the spiders weren't really poisonous, so everything was kinda fine and he kept eating them. As you read further, you will see that Dr. Roberts eventually became addicted to the taste of the spiders he was eating, and he started hunting them. Eventually, they started growing in size, and he was interested, so he took one with him to analyze in his little lab, and he discovered that the spiders were indeed toxic for him. When you approach his door, you can hear him trying to whisper something, but it appears as if he's almost choking on his own words that he's speaking. Eventually, you find out that he cut out his own tongue with a rusty knife, as it has swollen three times the size from the spider toxins. He described it in his memoirs as an unnecessary organ that he didn't need anymore. Probably because he was isolated from civilization. Indeed, folks, something horrible happened in these mines. And as you dig deeper into the diary pages you come across, you find out that the deadly virus was released upon the miners working here. Scientists assumed that they were lysergic acids with a pH value of 4 that were released during the excavation. They came to that conclusion because some of the miners started developing paranoid schizophrenic behavior. The Inuits called it Turngeit as they tried fleeing the mines. Turngeit is far worse than any virus. 
Spirits infest your body, spirits that have never been connected to any physical form, causing you to lose your sanity and succumb to their control. At least, that's what I could gather from the written documents that I read. Guys, I believe the game relies a little bit too much on written documents to tell its story. It's really ruining the atmosphere for me. See, you don't just read these documents because you're curious about the lore of the game. No, 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 no. You read these documents because they're often part of the giant puzzle that you are currently finding yourself in. It may be something as simple as a paragraph in which I obviously have to figure out the code for a door that I need to open, instructions for explosives, or a small interaction between colleagues that tells me where they hide the spare fuses. Again guys, the game has way, way, way too many written documents that I have to read and, and way too little action for me to... Holy fuck! Shit licking flea bag. On the bright side though, I never knew how easy it is to learn Morse code. Maybe this is something I should look into more in the future. The puzzles are a lot of fun when you discover how to solve them, and it feels rewarding when you spend the last hour gathering all the pieces you need to witness that small masterpiece unfold in front of you. But the reading part and the useless dogs that you have to avoid along the way really water the experience down for me. That feeling of isolation is tremendously reduced after a miner who calls himself Red contacts you via the walkie-talkie that you gathered earlier. He's quite the pleasant fella to listen to, especially since you have not heard the voice of another human being for hours playing this. As far as my eye has seen, our rocky grave extends, and yet you cast away my hope like you would a puppy, freshly rolled in its own feces. I hope that your warped sense of morality is better company than I, because now it is all you have left. The dude is a little bit strange, though, and he often tries to trick you into getting yourself killed. Here he's pissed that I disobeyed him, so he lures me into a cave infested with spiders. Coincidentally, a cave-in happens as I enter, so I'm basically fucked. Fuck, this is fucking ridiculous! The hammering motion always fails to work when I need it the most. How does my brain flesh know your fluids are leaking? Because the red tricked you! <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I don't have anything else to add about this game except for the score, which is gonna be a 6 and a half out of 10. It's a nice survival horror adventure game that has its flaws. It is a valiant effort by Frictional Games, but they didn't bring their A game, especially if you consider that this is supposed to initialize an entire trilogy of survival horror games. Compare this to the sequel, which is a far superior game to this one. That being said, I had a lot of fun playing this game. Next up is gonna be Penumbra the Black Plague, which I'm gonna be presenting to you in the next Sledgehammer Review. Stay tuned, bye. Eight thirty, as it's always showing me.